Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com and Fossi Audio, the ZA3 amplifier. But this video kind of took a turn a little bit because I was setting up, taking some measurements, and I was showing you the test setup. And the idea of the video was I wanted to show you this new box. Okay, it's programmable load. It's a QA451B. Quant Asylum goes with the Quant Assignment QA403. This guy will make my life easier because I can do a bunch of testing faster and I can switch between 8 ohm and 4 ohm loads. But I wanted to make sure that it works as well as my, my loads, right? So I have the 200 watt. I have four of these. They're all 200 watts. Two of them are 8 ohms and these two down here are 4 ohms. Okay, so I wanted to do a test with this amplifier with these two resistors and then do a test with that, compare it. So that'll be next video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what we found out. So in doing tests, in the past, I've done videos uh, testing a whole bunch of cables to make sure they're all testing the same way. I've tested a whole bunch of, um, well, I've done a bunch of tests with power cables, resistors, all kinds of things. Now these resistors, the green ones, actually work, perform better at high frequencies than the silver ones. These are more non-inductive. And I think I'm gonna build a load bank with more of these guys, okay? Especially after this test. And so, here, let me bring you over the bench, show you what we found when I was I found it while I was showing you the bench setup. So let, let me bring you over and do that, okay? All right, guys, I noticed something when I was showing you my setup. Uh, the THC, now this, you have to wait for it to settle down and take a measurement. See, it's 0.54 when this is 0 0.008, 0 0.54, 0 0.007 or something. This is THD with noise up here. This is THD regular. But the right channel now is 0 0.006. I don't know why the signal has to bounce around like that. I wish it would just keep the signal and blast it, but I think it has to put out the signal, take a measurement, show you, and then it, for some reason it does a cyclic thing. If somebody knows why, I guess I need to ask Quant Asylum why that does it, but it is kind of irritating when you're trying to take a measurement and you're trying to show somebody something. <laughs> but anyway, I just found out there's a problem with one of my resistors. I switched resistors and the noise followed the resistor. Hey guys, I'm gonna jump in the video real quick here. I'm gonna, I ended this video and then I decided to put the screen resistor in here and do a follow up and show the improvement. Like the video if you like it, okay? If you found value in it. Uh, took a little time to do all this. Really appreciate you liking the video, uh, subscribing if you haven't done so. So let's jump back in the video. Thanks for watching. Just want to let you know that I'm going to put this after the goodbye section, okay? So I'm going to say goodbye, all that regular stuff, I think. And then I'll come back and show you um, the summary, okay? With the new green guy, okay? I think that's why I'm going to do the video because of the way I cut it, all right? All right okay, thanks, guys. All right, guys. Now here, what I want to show you is the body plots and we're gonna i'm gonna redo this with good resistors but with the eight ohm resistors they have that bump at the high frequencies that's what happens with these with this tpa 3255 chip it's just the way it performs now with the post filter feedback it helps you know solve that keeps it flat right now the thing is is with four ohms it also has less of that resonant peak at the high frequency. But if you look at the picture, you'll notice that the eight ohms and the four ohms, one of the four ohms does look nice and rounded, but the other four ohm channel still had a rise. So I thought, well, I played around the connections a bunch, made sure everything is all connected well. And I'm like, okay, maybe there's just a problem with that channel. Then, I started to uh, look at, you know, show, I started doing the video and I was showing you the test setup and I noticed the THD, the harmonic distortion was higher in one of the channels. So I went back, 
ended up swapping both I swapped cables around and then I finally swapped the resistors and that's what it was it was resistors one of these resistors has been overheated in some of my testing <laughs> I've done some tests that are up close to 200 watts I haven't gone over 200 watts I don't think well I might have gotten some transients but you know resistors are usually good for that but it's just that prolonged temperature I've got these guys really really hot so you know at the 200 watt resistor you should always derate resistors I say by 25 to 30 percent uh, not the 50 percent thing they teach in school you know if you need 100 watts get a 200 watt resistor no if you need 100 watts get a 300 watt resistor so I think these guys are going to come in a little handier for the four ohms because they've got a little bit more power these are actually 300 watts four ohms so I think I'll be able to protect these guys a little bit better. They'll get glowing hot. I've actually, uh, in power supply testing that, gotten these really hot where they've gone black. And then they come back to color almost. And they still perform really well. So, but anyway, so there we go. So here's the distortion curves. You can see how the distortion looks. It's like 0.00, .00 in one channel. And the other channel, it's like 0.5. Now, uh, yeah, and that followed the resistor. I swapped cables back and forth. That didn't change it. When I changed the resistor, that's what it was. So it was a resistor. So I'm going to try another video doing the same thing. So we'll go through it faster. <laughs> and uh, I'll use the green ones for the 4 ohm test. And... And then we'll try this guy, okay? All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was a short video just showing you the importance of checking all your peripherals, all the things you're testing with. Even something as simple as a resistor can fail. And maybe, you know, if, if it fails dramatically, catastrophically, then it's obvious there's a failure. But if it's just changed values and really just change values at the higher frequency then um well and you know because of that it's got some noise and the noise was a giveaway so yeah that's not an obvious find if you weren't doing noise testing it wouldn't be obvious that that resistor had a problem so there you go all right guys thanks for watching two big thumbs up my patrons and two big thumbs up to my YouTube members and Danny for being a team member. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. And also, oh, I had somebody hit the super like button. That was awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you buying me a cup of coffee. So that was awesome. Now, um, this stuff's all warm right here because I've been testing it for a while. So I think I'll continue and we'll move on and I'll do another video showing this stuff. Okay. It's turning into a long day. So like the video if you liked it helps channel a lot um appreciate it okay thanks subscribe if you haven't done so all right guys we'll see you next time all right guys so i replaced the one silver the bad resistor with this green one okay now look at the body plots now the four they're both four ohm resistors the green one, like I said, tested a little bit better back in the day. I'll put the link to the video where I tested the resistors to show the difference and how they work. Uh, you can see on the graph, channel, the left channel, the blue one, uh, performed just a little bit better. You know, so resistors, it's amazing. Think about this being your speaker not a resistor so that's why we want our resistors to be as clean as possible because we don't know what our speaker is going to be like so if we're going to compare amp testing we have to have a really clean baseline type test so this is our baseline this is where we start from now every speaker we add even a pair of speakers from the same manufacturer you get pair a pair b come off the center line at the same time I can guarantee you they're going to test so different, okay? Well, I can't guarantee you that, but it would surprise me if they didn't test slightly different. So, anyway, how much does it make a difference? We don't know, but when we're testing amps and we want to baseline them and spec them, 
we want everything to be good so now the next video we'll test this guy hopefully that test as well as uh my best resistor okay you wouldn't think of a resistor like this would be non-inductive because it's a big old wound resistor but they wind it one direction and then they wind it back the other direction so the inductance created this way is canceled by the inductance going back the other way so yeah pretty cool um here let me show you what the distortion looks like even the distortion's better with this resistor pretty amazing right all right so <laughs> All right, guys, so this is just kind of a bonus section showing, putting this in there. So I uh, hope you like it. Thumbs up. Like the video. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. And thumbs up to all my viewers. Really appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Can't wait to test that.